Good morning. Let's keep talking about island colonization, um, and this time in Madagascar. My name is Christina Douglas. I'm a Buck postdoctoral fellow in the Department of Anthropology and in the Department of Vertebrate Zoology. So as many of you may know, Madagascar was colonized recently in human history relative to other parts of the world. Some estimates placed or initial arrivals of people in Madagascar to the first millennium AD, but there's emerging evidence that an early forager phase may be present in Madagascar. We're not sure exactly who the first Malagasy were in terms of where they were coming from, um, and so many questions remain to be answered both about the precise timing and location of first arrivals. Madagascar is incredibly biogeographically diverse, as I'm sure you all know. In the late Holocene, Madagascar also experienced tremendous environmental change. And so many research questions uh, from archaeologists and paleontologists and paleoecologists are concerned with the link between human arrival on the island and some of these changes. Famous among these changes are the extinction of uh, megafauna in Madagascar and other endemics. Here you see reconstructions of some of these megafauna species that included giant lemurs, pygmy hippos, and these giant elephant birds. The elephant birds in particular are a mysterious uh, case of extinction because we have very limited evidence from archaeological and paleontological sites of elephant bird remains. Very few, if any, elephant bird bones have been recovered from any archaeological sites. And the purpose of my research is to look at eggshell, which I have found in abundant quantities at archaeological sites in southwest Madagascar, as an alternative means for understanding extinction of these animals. To give you some context in terms of where we are in addressing some of these questions, we have very large gaps in our data sets concerning human impact on the environment in Madagascar. Here, for example, you see that of the many invasive plants and animals that were introduced to the island in the late Holocene, we have limited knowledge of the precise timing and location of their introduction. So the arrows are essentially pointing to uh, places where we know rice, cotton, and cattle were introduced. Um, and some suggestions of the timing of those introductions. But for the vast majority of invasives in Madagascar, we have almost no data um, to time their introduction. We also have a fairly limited archaeological sample in terms of uh, geographic representation of the different regions in Madagascar and in terms of timing. The map on the left-hand side, if you uh, turn your attention to the orange boxes, those represent sites with this potentially very early forager component going back as far as 4500 BP. The other sites that you see, the other phases that you see highlighted in those boxes are all from the mid-first uh, millennium AD and onward. On the right-hand side, if you look at that map, you'll see that paleontological sites are concentrated very heavily in the southwest, which is why I focus my research there to link archaeological signatures to paleontological remains. Why ratites? I'm interested broadly in human ratite interaction as these birds have gone extinct from much of their former ranges. Famous examples include New Zealand and Mauritius, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, where Moa, in the case of New Zealand, and the dodo, in the case of Mauritius, went extinct relatively recently due to human pressures. So ratites are very interesting because all of the materials uh, that people are interested in have multiple lives and iterations um, in, in human life. Eggs as uh, something to be consumed, as containers for liquids, as material for crafts, and so on. So for the first time, I've documented that people in Madagascar were, in fact, exploiting nests of elephant birds. They were doing this for many reasons. I've found evidence of worked eggshell for the first time. Along the top row, you'll see eggshell fragments that were worked and are essentially the remains of perforations that were created to extract liquid from eggs and then presumably to be able to use eggs as containers for other liquids after they were consumed. 
I found evidence of beads and of other artifacts associated with eggs. But the question of timing is still very uh, pertinent. Are the eggs that I've found that have been worked extensively by human communities coming from active nests? And this is where this microstructure work comes in. The main picture in the center of the screen is showing you a, an ontogenetic time series of changes in eggshell microstructure, this is the interior portion of eggshell, as the embryo develops. This was done on turkey eggshell and applied to the archaeological record of the American Southwest. I'm now using similar techniques and developing them further to look at extinct taxa, in this case the elephant bird, and as you see on the upper right hand side, these are SEM images of elephant bird eggs showing the degree of erosion. So as the embryo develops, uh, here again in the, the main image, the top left corner, that is an undeveloped um, egg, uh, embryo, and in the far bottom right, that is a fully developed embryo and a fully eroded egg. So I'm using this to track whether eggs that I'm looking at from the archaeological record were in fact harvested as uh, at, from active nests and had um, living embryos in them. So by using these techniques, we'll be able to use eggshell to understand human use of eggs. We'll be able to potentially distinguish better between the different species of ratites in Madagascar and learn a little bit more about their reproductive ecology and finally better be able to address this question of human driven or not extinction of the elephant bird. Thank you. That's a great question. One of the main problems, I would say, is that we have a, a sampling bias because most of these sub-fossil sites in Madagascar are concentrated from what we can tell in the southwest. But aside from my excavations, which cover uh, a 20 kilometer by 2 kilometer area, there have been no other systematic archaeological studies. So it's not clear um, you know, we don't have a very good sample of sites in the southwest to be able to say whether or not, uh, you know, a lot of other subfossil remains do show up. For the moment, though, it doesn't seem to be the case. And these subfossil sites um, that I mention are often taphonomic traps. Um, and so one of the priorities for field research is to go out and survey those areas, uh, so survey around these subfossil sites and look more carefully for archaeological signatures. Well, I'm interested in environmental change um, and particularly in how humans contribute to environmental change. Um, islands in particular are interesting and Madagascar among them I would argue is the most interesting because of its tremendous biogeographical and cultural diversity and the fact that it was settled relatively late in human history. It's a huge landmass, um, you know, a little bit bigger than California to give you some context and it's only approximately 250 miles off the African mainland. Um, so why was it settled so late? And there's a huge debate about anthropogenic influence in things like the extinction, but we still have relatively sparse evidence to uh, say exactly how people may have contributed to environmental change in Madagascar. I know what taxonomy is, I don't know what taxophony is. Thank you. So taphonomy is the study of how things change once they've been deposited into, in this, in my case, into the archaeological record. Um, and so this is important with the eggshell in particular because I'm trying to disentangle erosion uh, due to development of the embryo so that I can know when these eggs were potentially harvested and then erosion that occurs um, on the surface of these microstructures through action like wind, um, sand erosion, etc. So trying to disentangle those factors. <laughs>